Hello, grade 11s. Welcome to this lesson on bond length and bond energy. Let's start with a reminder of what these words mean. For each bond, the bond length is the distance between the bonded nuclei. Remember that at this distance, the two bonding atoms are most stable. In other words, they have the least amount of chemical potential energy. Because the bonded atoms are stable, energy must be added to pull them apart. The amount of energy needed to break a bond is that bond's bond energy. This is the same amount of energy as the amount of energy the two nuclei lost when the bond between them formed. Let's ask Nelly to help us understand how bond energy is related to bond length, atom size, and the number of bonds between atoms. Nelly starts by referring to the halogens, which exist as diatomic molecules. Here are the sizes, in picometers, of each halogen atom. Amongst these halogens, fluorine has the smallest atomic radius and iodine the largest. How does atomic radius affect bond length? Over to you, Nelly. I have used these cardboard circles to represent atoms of different size. You can have two small circles overlapping for a small molecule like fluorine and two larger circles overlapping to represent a larger molecule like iodine. Now notice that the distance between the centers of the smaller circles is much less than the distance between the centers of the larger circles. So this model predicts that the larger the atomic radius of an atom, the larger the bond length of the molecule. Let's check out the bond lengths measured by using x-rays. Well, clearly, the size of the atom does affect the bond length. The larger the atom, the longer the bond. Now let's turn our attention to bond energy. Remember that this is the energy required to break a chemical bond. One of the models scientists use to describe a chemical bond is to think of it like a vibrating spring. In this model, bonding pairs of electrons move backwards and forwards continuously. The bonds do not only vibrate, but also rotate around the axis between the nuclei. Have a look at the spring models representing ethane, ethene, and ethine. Here is a single long spring joining two balls together. This represents a single bond formed between the two carbon atoms in ethane. Next, we have two shorter springs that represent a double bond as found in ethene. And here are three even shorter springs that represent the triple bond found in ethene. In which of these models will most energy be required to pull the balls apart? Clearly, the balls in the model with the three short springs are hardest to pull apart. This suggests that the greater the number of bonds and the shorter the bond length, the more energy required to break the bonds. Let's look at measurements for bond length and bond energy for ethane, ethene, and ethine to see if they confirm what the model suggests. Chemists cannot measure the energy needed to break the bond of a single molecule, but they can measure the energy required to break a very large number of molecules, a mole. For this reason, bond energy is measured as kilojoules per mole. When a graph of bond energy is drawn for the hydrocarbon molecules, you will notice that the bond energy increases as the number of bonds increases. You can also see that the bond energy increases as the bond length decreases, just as the model predicted. But does this trend apply to other molecules? Well, 
Let's examine the halogens again, where there is only a single bond between each of these atoms. Have a look at the spring model I have for these molecules. Here I have a long spring and here a short spring, each connecting two balls. The short spring seems to hold the balls tighter together while the long springs connect the balls more loosely. It is also easier to stretch the long spring than the short spring. What prediction can you make about the relationship between bond length and bond energy from this model? Let's look at the values chemists have determined. Well, here's a surprise. You would expect the bond energy to be highest for fluorine with the shortest bond length, but it isn't. It is highest for chlorine, which has the second smallest bond length. The bond energy does decrease as the bond length increases for bromine and iodine, but fluorine doesn't fit in with the general trend. Fluorine is the most reactive non-metal on the periodic table. The fluorine molecule is unstable and requires very little energy to break the fluorine, fluorine bond. This might explain why fluorine is an exception to the general trend that bond energy decreases with increasing bond length. Thank you, Nelly. Why is a short bond stronger than a longer bond? Shorter bonds tend to be more stable than longer bonds. In other words, shorter bonds tend to have less potential energy than longer bonds. So more energy must be added to the molecule to break a shorter bond than a longer bond. This makes a short bond stronger than a longer bond. And that's it for this series. Check out the other videos in this series and remember the task video. Also visit the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.